Hi, my name is James Dole, and I'm the founder and CEO of Human Rights for Kids, a Washington, D.C.-based 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the promotion, protection, and advancement of human rights of children. And uh, one of my first uh, jobs, or my, one of my first projects in that job, rather, was working um, to help free a young woman who had been trafficked as a teenager and who had been incarcerated for having committed a crime against her trafficker. And it was really in the context of that work that I learned of the intersectionality of uh, sex and labor trafficking and how oftentimes the methods and means of control that are used in the context of sex trafficking, especially for children, uh, the use of the grooming process, um, sexual abuse that happens to children, the process of the tra trauma bond being formed between the child and, and the trafficker, uh, those same trauma bonds can be used in the context of labor trafficking, where a child labor trafficking victim develops a similar bond with their abuse and is willing to do anything uh, for their trafficker or abuser, including domestic servitude work, um, you know, babysitting, household chores, working in certain industries um, as a way to, um, you know, essentially espouse, you know, their their belief in, in their love for the person. Labor trafficking matters to me because every child deserves a childhood. For me, um, as a survivor of child labor trafficking, who experienced uh, trafficking through the use of a traumatic bond, that I had developed with my abuser through uh, child sex abuse, through um, that grooming process. Uh, for me, I was robbed of my childhood and I didn't really get a chance to experience many of the things that my peers were experiencing at a very pivotal age, uh, between the ages of 13 and 16. And so um, that whole time period for me was kind of lost and then also having to transition uh, back into a quote unquote normal high school life was very, very difficult. And um, so for me, you know, I don't want any child um, to have to go through what I had to go through and the awkwardness and the difficulty of, of trying to be a kid again once you've lost your innocence. And that loss of innocence is for me why this issue is so important and why people really need to pay attention to how uh, kids can end up on the spectrum of exploitation, where it's not just you know sex of trafficking over here, labor trafficking over here, but rather recognize that anytime you have vulnerable children, uh, children from uh, backgrounds where they have experienced early childhood trauma, uh, like was the case in my case, kids of color, like uh, I was, um, where you can have these experiences where kids can end up um, being abused and exploited by older adults where they can develop a traumatic bond and then end up um, in these uh, situations where they house, they live in, with other people um, and they're willing to do anything uh, for them because um, you know they feel this misplaced sense of loyalty and love to, to their abuser. So I hope that this is helpful in uh, providing context to uh, an issue that needs a lot more nuanced conversation and that uh, folks can uh, broaden the way that they think about this issue so that we can identify more victims of child labor trafficking and sexual abuse. Thank you.